Okay, so let's build a page together. So I'll do parts, and then you'll follow along, right? You'll pause it and do what I do, and hopefully that will help make some of these things make more sense. We're going to do this on Replit. So R-E-P-L dot I-T, right? You can sign up if you'd like to. It will save what you create if you sign up. You can also sign in with your GitHub account. Right, and since you should have one, uh, you know, that's pretty easy to do. Uh, they also have through Gmail as well, so whatever you'd like to do. I'm just going to come down here to the bottom, and I'm not going to sign in or sign up. So I'm choosing, I'm choosing HTML, CSS, JavaScript. That's the precise uh, one that I'm choosing. Replit can be used with a bunch of languages, right? So um, it's important to specify which one you want because otherwise what we're trying to do might not work because it's not going to be expecting the right language. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So when we click it, it's already going to have some things set up here, right? On the left side, we can see a file system, which includes our HTML file. It includes a JavaScript file, which we're not going to really worry about, and it includes a CSS file, which we'll use some. All right, so what's in here, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, trash it, and we're just going to walk through the process. So command A, oop, 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 click here, and then command A. All right, because I want all of this. I don't want everything in my browser, just this. And we're going to start out with declaring the doc type. Now, uh, this this isn't absolutely important. A lot of websites and stuff don't even bother doing this, and the browsers work fine with it. But it is a proper syntax. So we open. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit. Maybe that'll make it a little bit easier to see. There we go. We open our angle bracket exclamation point doc type, and then HTML. And then we close our angle bracket. So go ahead and pause, write this, and try it. All right, following that, we should specify that we are writing in HTML. I mean, it's a website, and the browser is going to try to read it as HTML anyway, but once again, it's good form. So we open the tag, and any tag that we open, we should also close, right? So open angle bracket, HTML, close angle bracket. Then to close the, the tag, to close the element, the whole HTML element, we have this closing tag here, open angle bracket, slash HTML, close angle bracket. Now any HTML that we write needs to be between these two. So we want to put a few line breaks in here to give us some space. And we can always, of course, increase that as we go. The next part of an HTML document is typically the head section of the HTML document. So we type head in angle brackets. If we open it, we should close it. Almost every HTML element needs a closing tag. Uh, there are a few that don't, but the vast majority do. So we open it, then we close it, right? So go ahead and pause it and do what I just did. Just like the HTML tags, we want a little bit of space here because we're going to put something inside. So inside of here, we put the title. And this is whatever we want to call the page. So we could say about me. That's what I want you to do for this page, is create a little about me page. And then later, you can use some of the things that we do on here to then make your own page. All right, so for right now, that's fine. We can add some more stuff between the head tags later, but for right now, that'll do. After the head element comes the body. So the body is the most of what's on your page. Most of what's on your page should be in here, right? Like all the content, everything that you actually see on the page goes here, right? We typed this title and yet you don't see it, do you, right? So you might be saying like, well, where is this? Isn't this on the page? And the head isn't on the page. Only the body is on the page. The head is information for like Google or like your browser, but it's not what goes on the page itself. So this title here, if we weren't on Replit, if we were on just the page that I am creating, it would say about me up here. 
where it says replit.it hyphen online HTML, CSS, JavaScript, whatever else, that's the title for this page. And if I, let's see if I can do it, if I view the page source, there we go. Let's zoom in a little bit, right? You see doc type, you see HTML, header, title, and of course they've got some extra stuff in here, some extra attributes, but that's fine. Inside of this title tag, you can see it says replit hyphen online HTML CSS JS, like we saw up there, as well as the rest of what it says, right? And when we look for replit on Google, and let's specifically look for the HTML CSS page, replit.it, HTML CSS, uh, HTML CSS JavaScript, right? That right there, that's the title, right? So it's pulling this text from this part of the source code, this title. This is telling Google what the title of the page is, and so that's what it's pulling. All right. So once again, if we open a tag, if we open an element, we should probably close it. So we'll close it. Now I'm using the words element and tag kind of interchangeably. So um, maybe you would like some, some specificity in exactly what the difference is. So this whole thing is an element. This is our title element. It includes both tags and what goes inside. Individually, each one of these is a tag. This is the opening tag for the title element. This is the closing tag for the title element. Okay, so um, now that being said, a lot of people will refer to them interchangeably. They'll just say, oh, open an element or open a tag or close a tag or this is the title tag or whatever. And that's fine. We commonly just sort of use them interchangeably. But technically, this is the element and each one of these is a tag, the opening tag and the closing tag. All right, so we've opened the body element, right? And now we should actually put some stuff into it because then we'll actually be able to see stuff on our page. Now I could do all of this in GitHub, just like I was doing yesterday with some of the other stuff, and that's fine, but I like using Replit just like I like using the Markdown Editor because it shows it live. So if I go in here and I type an H1 tag, this is a header one tag, like using the asterisk in Markdown, Markup, Markdown, Markdown on GitHub, right? As soon as I start typing, We should, oh, okay. <laughs> it's not 100% live on Replit. We do have to hit save, or we have to hit run, but it'll do it instantly, right? We don't have to like uh, hit save and then wait for like, you know, five minutes. So if I hit run, there we go. Here is the about me and notice the size and everything is pretty big, right? So um, yeah, so I could then come in here and add like an H4 tag or something, right? Remember I said there's six different header elements six different header types. So I can use one of the other ones, right? So maybe this is a page, a page about me or something like that, right? And that'll, that'll work. If I run it again, there you go. You can see the larger header and you can see the smaller header. All right, so go ahead and pause it and do what I just did. All right, so right now I'm just gonna build some content and then I will Try to make it look a little bit nicer later, right? I think that's probably the best way of doing it. What should we include on here? Uh, as well as not just what should we include, but what sorts of skills might be relevant to what you might want to make? All right, so uh, one of the big things that we talked about already, especially with Markdown and with the internet, is that, you know, images. Images are pretty popular, right? And that's a common desire to put on pages with good reason, right? So if it's a page about me, maybe a picture, right? So I don't have any pictures here ready for an about me, but I'll go ahead and go to photo booth and take one, right? So you're on an iMac, so you have access to a webcam, unless you're not doing this in our computer lab. I'll go ahead and press command space on my keyboard, which brings me the spotlight search and I can type in photo booth.
All right, so I have photo booth, and I am absent from the photo, but I will include this guy. <laughs> so I'll use him for my picture. All right, so now I will tell it to take the photo. Oh, we don't want the glare in there. Perfect. All right, so uh, now right now this photo is like stuck in photo booth, but to get it out on a Mac is really easy. I'm just going to click and drag it to my desktop, right? And so now it should be, there it is, right? It's on here, perfect. I'll close photo booth. And now I have a photo that I can use, all right. So this is named photo on 6-5-19 at 5.14 a.m. Uh, that's not a great name. Um, let's rename it. And I'm not sure what actual file type this is. I would hope that it's a JPEG, but it might be a PNG. It is a JPEG. Perfect. It's kind of large, actually, for what it is, but that's, that's fine. All right. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to press return on my keyboard, which lets me rename the photo. I'll call it me.jpg, right? Much easier name. I'll go into Replit, and I will tell it to add a file, right? Oh, this is to add like an HTML file. Add folder, add files. What else is here? Oh, oh, upload file. That's what I was looking for. Go ahead, upload file. Me.jpg. Awesome. Now we have it here in our Replit application web app, right? And now I can add the photo. So I'm gonna open an angle bracket, right? Image, this is our image element, right? So IMG and then SRC, which stands for source equals, and then in quotation marks inside of here, we need this file name, me.jpg. There we go. And then we can close that. Now this element doesn't need another tag to close itself. This is a self-closing element. Now it will work this way. A more sort of proper way to do it now is considered to add a slash at the end and that sort of closes the element at the same time. And now if we hit run, it should work. There we go. Oh, it's large. It is a large photo. That's why it was so big. Hmm. Yeah, we do not need it to be that. That large look at him he's, he's huge all right although I'm also zoomed in it's still big it's still big okay we're gonna add some extra attributes in here right so we've talked about elements right and we have this image element and this is actually not part of well it is part of the element but it's not like this is not an image SRC element or an image SRC tag this is an image element and the SRC the source is an attribute we can add other attributes too like a height or a width. So let's add a width. So we're gonna do width equals, and then inside of quotation marks, maybe uh, 400, right? There we go. That is much more reasonable. I'm gonna make some of these a little bit smaller so you can see better, right? Now, I didn't change the height, but the height automatically changed too. You don't have to change the width and the height, the default for the vast majority of browsers is if you change one, but you leave the other blank, the other one will match automatically the proportions. It will try to keep the proportions of the photo so you don't end up with something weird or wonky. I could try to guess what the height should be if the width is 400, but I don't want to do that math. I'll let the browser do that math, and that's fine. So go ahead and pause it and do what I just did.